an independent coroner hired by the family of George Floyd found that his death was, in fact, a homicide, saying that he died of asphyxiation from sustained pressure, which was obviously caused by Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin's knee being on his neck for nine minutes, including three minutes after he had already passed away. Now, if you saw the video, which I'm assuming most of you did, you'd say this conclusion is common sense. But the reason why uh, this independent coroner's ruling is so important is because the county coroner came to a different conclusion somehow. Yeah. The video that we all saw, which was very clearly murder, homicide, well, the county coroner says, mm, actually, it wasn't technically a homicide. Actually, he found no physical findings that supports a diagnosis of traumatic asphyxia or strangulation. Mr. Floyd had underlying health conditions including coronary artery disease and hypertensive heart disease. The combined effects of Mr. Floyd being restrained by the police, his underlying health conditions, and any potential intoxicants in his system likely contributed to his death. Now, I am clearly not a medical expert, but I am going to confidently say that that report is complete bullshit. Because just look at some of the language that was used here. Um, first of all, potential intoxicants. Do we have a toxicology report? Are you confirming that he did take drugs or alcohol? You're just speculating at this point, and you're basically trying to blame the victim. So it wasn't necessarily the knee that was on his neck for nine minutes. It was maybe the fact that he took drugs. That's really what killed him. Who believes this? Nobody believes this. Nobody believes this. On top of that, um, notice how the coroner referred to Jer Derek Chauvin's uh, kneeling on his neck for nine minutes as being restrained. Being restrained? That's what you call being restrained? When somebody's knee is on your neck for nine minutes and you're saying that you can't breathe, that's called being restrained? I mean, these are Orwellian descriptions of a homicide that we all saw with our very eyes. I mean, millions of people watched this video. And this coroner is trying to pee on our legs and tell us it's raining. No, we saw it. So clearly, there's a conflict of interest or something going on there. Something sketchy is taking place because for the coroner to say that that wasn't a homicide when we all saw it something is going on there there's corruption i don't know what it is i'm only speculating but that guy needs to be investigated or girl i don't know something is not right there and as matthew a cherry put it the fix is in fuck this shit exactly and do you understand why people are taking to the streets it's because things like this happen so frequently and the police officers almost always get away with it and understand that people are protesting because of what happened to George Floyd. But the way that I see it is that this is basically a tipping point, right? They're also taking to the streets to protest the death of uh, Breonna Taylor, of Sean Reed, of black people who have been constantly brutalized by the police in America. And there's just no repercussions. It doesn't matter if they're on video. In fact, them being on video isn't actually holding them accountable. It's not a check like we thought it would be. They don't care. Derek Chauvin's knee was on George Floyd's neck for nine minutes, and he knew that people were filming. He knew that this could potentially go viral, and he still didn't care. Why? Because he knew he'd get away with it. He knew that there probably wouldn't be accountability. And sure, he was taken into custody, but he's being charged with third degree murder. How is this not first degree murder? Sure, you have to say it's premeditated, but he had his knee on his neck for nine minutes. That's a homicide. That is first degree murder. Now, I do feel a little bit relieved that Keith Ellison is overseeing this. And, you know, with him in charge of this, I think that we could see charges against all four of the officers involved because the other three who aren't yet uh, taken into custody, they, they were complicit. They were, in fact, complicit. But this is why people are marching. They're not necessarily marching because only George Floyd. Yes, he's a huge part of it. But because if they don't actually raise the alarm right now, then this is going to keep happening. It's going to keep happening. 
So, you know, you can't just say, well, they, they want justice for George Floyd and that's it. If you just, you know, if you do something about that, if you hold these four officers accountable, then all of these protests will go away. I don't necessarily think it's that simple. I think that people want more than that. I know that they want more than that. We have to value black lives in America, but currently they're not valued. They are murdered with impunity and officers who do that get away with it. And part of the reason why they get away with it is because mayors are too afraid to hold the police force accountable. And coroners in the county are often in cahoots with police. It's a giant club. These are many establishments in each city. And the reason why nothing changes is because, you know, police have a lot of power. So if we don't fundamentally change the system, then this will keep happening. But I think that it's more than changing the system. It's instituting a brand new system because the old system is run to the core. And look, every single person has got to be outraged. I've seen a lot of pearl clutching over the looting and the rioting. But guess what? All of that, these material things, they can be replaced. The CNN logo was repainted over within hours. All of that can be replaced. But lives cannot be replaced. You can never bring back George Floyd or Breonna Taylor or Sean Reed. You can never bring back these lives that were lost. So that's why people are taking to the streets. And if you're more outraged with the looting and the rioting than the actual lives that are being taken due to police brutality, then your priorities are fundamentally out of whack and you need to reassess your priorities. Do better.